What's up everybody, Boone here from Boone Loves Video. Hope you had a good week. Today I really wanted to touch on some of the basics of Premiere Pro and that is the editing tools. Now, what I'm talking about are all the tools over here in the tools panel. If you can't see it, go to window and then it's tools right here and you can move this panel around to wherever you'd like it. I like it over here to the right. So we're gonna go through these one at a time. So if you're new to Premiere Pro, this tutorial is gonna be great for you. If you're intermediate or advanced, you might still have some curiosity what some of these tools do. You just may not have used some of these tools ever. So this tutorial can also be good for you. Just fast forward ahead to whatever tool you'd like. I'm just gonna go down the line here one at a time and show you what these do. So let's get started. Okay, the first one we have, this is for you beginners. This is the selection tool. So the shortcut key is V for the selection tool. In the selection tool, you know, you can grab clips, you can move clips around, you can kind of lasso things here. Like I said, you can grab a single clip, move it around. You can also make simple trims by grabbing edit points. If you look here, you, you can see as we go over an edit point, um, our cursor is changing, um, depending on telling us which clip we can grab onto there. So I can, you know, make a simple trim, move things around. So that is the selection tool. Next up, we have the Tracked Select Forward tool, shortcut key A. Now what this does, if you look at the new symbol here, we have two arrows. If you hold Shift, it's going to show you just one. So what this does is selects all of the clips, either all the clips if you leave it, if you leave it in regular mode here with the two arrows, it's going to select everything. So if I click Select here, it's going to select everything to the side here. It didn't have this one because it's Select Forward. So now watch what happens. I'm going to deselect. Now watch what happens if I hold shift. Now it's going to specify tracks. Well, I'm sorry. It's still these tracks are grouped together. Let me just make a quick, a few duplicates here. Just holding the alt key. So shortcut key A again. Now if I hold shift, you're going to see it's only track specific. But of course, if you have a, a clip that is linked up with audio or video, it's going to select the linked asset as well. So that is the track select forward tool. The track select backward tool is exactly what it sounds like. It's the same exact tool, only in the opposite direction. So, and it's the same works with the shift key. Okay, so those are our track select tools. Next up, we have the ripple edit tool. Sorry, I'm like, this microphone is so gigantic that I have to, you know, like, look around it to see my panel here. Sorry, it's just, uh, I don't have a great setup. I wanna get one of those microphones that hangs, but you know, I'm traveling so much that it's just not feasible. Okay, so this is the ripple edit tool, shortcut key B. I use this tool quite often, but I use uh, shortcuts for it for trimming. But let's, let me just show you. So as I showed you before, we have the select tool. Let me just go back and show you. So I have the select tool up now, and if I do a trim, it leaves a gap. So where the ripple edit comes into play here is if you want to automatically close that gap. So I'm going to hit the shortcut key B again to get our ripple tool going. And then if I do the same thing, make a little trim, watch what happens when I release. Boom, it closes that gap. It ripples everything um, back. Now, this ripple tool can work in both ways. If I want to extend this clip, I can grab this clip again. Now again, notice my cursor. It's showing me that I'm grabbing that clip. It's pointing in that direction as opposed to the other direction. If I were going this way, I'm affecting, I'm either trimming that clip to the right, uh, whichever way. So make sure you have the right clip selected. So just as I trim this, I can kind of extend it as well. And it's going to do a ripple. It's not going to, it's not going to mess with that endpoint of the other clip, it's just going to push that down. And it pushes all of the clips down. So let's do a ripple edit to this first clip. Watch what happens if I extend it. Boom, it shifted all of the other clips um, and down. So let me just go ahead and undo that. Okay, so that is the ripple edit tool. Very, very useful tool. And I would learn the sh shortcut keys for that, uh, which are Q and W. The, if you go back and watch my other tutorial that I made, I think about two weeks ago or a week ago about my favorite keyboard shortcuts, well, those two are my favorite keyboard shortcuts, and those are the quick trims, Q and W. Go back, watch that tutorial. I'll leave the link in the description. Great tutorial, because I did it. Okay, rolling edit tool, shortcut key. What was the shortcut key? N. Okay, so shortcut key N gives you the rolling edit tool. Now, basically, it does exactly what it says. It rolls your edit point. So you're basically moving an edit point. So let's go ahead and 
see what it does here. If you if you look at our symbol here, you know, we're going to grab our edit point. So I have my edit point selected, and now I can just move that around. Now it's not shifting our clips, it's simply moving it's so it's shifting the the edit point. So the out point of the previous clip is being adjusted while the in point of the next clip is being adjusted simultaneously. And we can make that edit and it gives us a preview in our program monitor it's showing us our out point and our end point and it's giving us the time code there on each the time code readout on each. Now it'll only go as far as where the in and out points are so you can only do a, uh, a rolling edit up to that point. Rolling edit tool very great play around with it. A lot of these tools you, you, you may feel like um, oh, I never used that. Or the first few times you use it, it might feel a little clunky and uncomfortable and counterintuitive. But I really urge you to just take some time, play with these tools. Before you know it, you're going to be using them. And they're very, very useful once you get comfortable with them. The rate stretch tool, very cool tool. Okay, I'm going to zoom out here a little bit. So the rate stretch tool does exactly what it says. You're changing the duration and speed of a clip. So let's go to the, this last clip here. If I grab the out point here and I move it down we're changing the duration if you see the little tooltip here it's changing the duration of the clip and now if I mouse over the clip and I look look at the tooltip here it says the name of the clip but it also gives us a percentage that's the new percentage of the speed so it's 83.42 83.42% that's the speed as, as compared to 100% which is regular speed so now if we watch this clip well, this is a landscape shot, so it's not a very good uh, example, but it's a uh, slow motion here. Let's do let's do a different clip here because these aren't very good examples. Okay, we have people walking in this clip. So right now, if I mouse over this one, and I see the tooltip, well, it doesn't show you it, but it's where it's at 100% speed. If I were to kind of control click on it and do uh, speed duration, it's going to show us 100%. Whereas if we go to this one and select speed and duration. It's going to show us that 83.42%. Okay, so let me grab the rate stretch tool. Again, keyboard shortcut R. And I'm just going to shorten this one, shorten the duration. And now, when I play this back, you're going to see it plays back in fast motion. So now if we mouse over this one, the selection tool, uh, 284%. So yeah, you can... I don't know the, the highest percent you can go. It's, I think it's in the thousands with the rate stretch tool, and you can really slow it down to like 1%, I think. Um, I'm going to go ahead and undo that. A really, really useful tool. Next up is the razor tool. Shortcut key C. Razor tool is as simple uh, you know, as it sounds. You, you, when you mouse over a clip and you click, it's going to basically give you a cut. And if you hold the shift key, now watch, watch what happens. I'm going to zoom in on the symbol here. If I hold shift, I'm holding shift, it gives us this symbol. And this basically means it's going to cut everything. As opposed to just the clip you're mousing over, this is going to cut everything in the timeline unless the timeline, unless a track is locked. It's going to just slice through or razor through every single track. Next up is the slip tool, shortcut key Y. So what does the slip tool do? Well, the slip tool these two are hard. I don't want to mess this up, mix this up with slide because these are very easy to mix up. Slip tool basically slips your clip within its in and out point. It's moving. Think about the source clip where your in and out points are. It's moving that clip within the in and out points. The in and out points on the actual timeline are staying in the same location on your timeline. You're just kind of slipping that clip uh, the the actual uh, in and out points of the source. So let me show you. Now pay attention. What, what you're going to look at here is you're going to pay attention to the in and out points here. These are in, what I mean, in and out points of where this clip actually starts. Um, let me just delete this so we don't we know what we're looking at here. So if I start to move this, watch our program monitor. Our program monitor is going to okay. There it is. It's going to give us uh, the in and out point. And it's showing you that there, that's as I move this, 
it's moving our in and out point, but it's not moving it on the timeline. It's not shifting it around on the timeline. It keeps your in and out point intact. So this is good if like your clip came in at a certain point and you're like, oh, I don't like where that comes in. You know, there's a, I can see a boom mic or I can see something. You can just slip that clip a little and cut that out. Or if you're trying to time something perfectly, you can just keep slipping that. And it's a really, really quick way as opposed to like trim, trim, move, trim, trim, move. It's, you know, you really need to learn this tool and use it because it's, I use, this is another another tool that I use on the regular, the slip tool. And just be aware if you hold Alt, you can slip the audio and video of a linked clip separately. And if you look down here, that's what I just did. And it throws them out of sync. Uh, you can see I moved it by about uh, 14 frames there. So I'm going to go ahead and undo that. But if you want to, I, I often do that. I'll slip some audio if I want, like someone's saying something under a B-roll clip and I, I want to move it just a little bit. You know, you can slip just the audio of, of a linked clip. Okay, next up is slide. Shortcut key U. Let's zoom back out. Now, slide is, is the opposite. You're, you're not changing the in and out point of the source clip. You're changing the in and out point on the timeline of the position of the clip on the timeline. So let me show you what I'm talking about here. And it keeps it and it doesn't give you any gaps. So it's just going to slide that clip and it's going to adjust the end point of the next clip and it's going to adjust the out point of the previous clip. So whenever you hit it, it, you'll be able to slide it as far as you can, as far as there's a clip there with enough coverage there that you can slide it within. So let me show you what I'm talking about. Let me grab this clip here and slide. So now I'm going to slide it this way. It looks like I can't slide it to the left at all. So, and you know why I can't, because if you look down here at our yellow clip, that little symbol there means it's the first endpoint of that clip. So there's no, there's no more space in that clip. That's the beginning of that clip. So there's no space to slide it, otherwise it would cause a gap. So it's not going to let you do that. So I can still slide it to the right a little bit. And you're going to see as I slide it and then release, it basically extended that last clip. So I'm going to undo that. Let's go over here and let me show you on a couple other clips how we're doing it. That's why I made all these clips different colors so you can kind of help help you visualize to see what's going on. You can see I can slide this one all the way up till it butts up to where this endpoint is. And I can maybe slide this down all the way. Yeah, because there's a lot of coverage here. So I could slide it all the way down there if I wanted to. I don't I kind of rarely use this one. Um, I use slip way more often. So I don't know, maybe if I can play around with the slide tool a little bit more. Next up is a pen tool, shortcut key P. Um, if, you, if you've ever used After Effects, you should know what this is all about. This is adding keyframes. So if you look down here, this is our rubber, ba rubber band. Um, this is showing you our volume. So if I add a couple of keyframes, um, I can then move them around. This is going to make our volume go up. So let's have a listen. Awesome. So it goes up, and I can add a couple more keyframes and fade it back out. So that's the pen tool. And you can go kind of crazy with this because there's all the different properties of the clip. I can open up the video here and I can, I can uh, use the pen tool to adjust keyframes of the video. And I'm pretty sure right now this is probably set to opacity. So let's take a look. Yeah, that's set to opacity on the video there, which you can change these. You can change it to like speed. You can change it to a couple of different properties. So right now we're fading up the clip and bringing up that if you don't want to use the regular effect transitions, you can you can really go in here and, and keyframe th things with the pen tool. That's the pen tool. Okay, these last two, oops, sorry. These last two tools, I must admit, I never actually use these tools. I use sh shortcut keys to kind of move around, especially the hand tool, which is shortcut key H. Hardly ever use it. I think if you use it, you're a goddamn hack. No, I'm just kidding. If you use this, you know, good for you. Hey, um, you know, that's cool. Good for you. You know, keep keep living in loser town. No, no. If you want to use the hand tool, that's great. Hey, more power to you. I never use it. Um, I use, uh, you know, like two fingers on the trackpad here or like a mouse scroll, whatever, to kind of navigate. I think this is just mainly to help you navigate the timeline. Maybe you can use it on uh, your program monitor as well, maybe to move things around. I don't know. Uh, okay, and last but not least, the zoom tool, another tool for hacks kidding kidding uh you know you can zoom in let's see uh zoom in and hold alt to zoom out i do not use this because you have the simple plus and minus keys which you can use so yeah some of these you know i just i, I kind of don't use don't be mad at me if you use these tools um you know good for you so those are the those are the editing tools in premiere pro 
uh, leave me a comment in uh, the comment section. Let me know what you think. Uh, if there's certain tools that you use all the time or if there's certain tools that you don't use at all, I'd love to hear about it. Okay, that's it for editing tools. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. If you did, give me a thumbs up, subscribe, because I got videos coming out every week. And uh, yeah, that's it. I will see you next week.